cruise news time. And as you can tell by my surroundings, we are no longer stuck at sea. We have been able to disembark from the carnival paradise. And ironically, when we got off the carnival paradise, we found that the next cruisers on the carnival paradise are being allowed to break the law. That's right, they're being allowed to break the law. Plus, I got a small pile of cruise news I wanna share with you, cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on September the 1st, Friday, September the 1st, 2023. I do need to throw a disclaimer out there. Yesterday I said the wrong date and the reality of my life is most days I don't know what the date is. So anytime that I say the date and it confuses you, just defer to whatever you think the date is because that's probably the correct date. And so apologies for anybody who mistakenly thought that the date was different yesterday because of what I said the date was, uh, you know, and thank you in advance. Okay. Let's run through this little pile of cruise news, and then I want to tell you about the carnival passengers breaking the law, breaking the law, breaking the law. What band is that? Any metalheads out there? Uh, first cruise news story, the Crystal Symphony has entered into service after refurbishment. This is the next cruise ship in the return of Crystal Cruises. You remember, they went bankrupt. They got bought out by a whole new firm. They got their cruise ships refurbished. And now the Crystal brand has risen from the ashes like the Phoenix to continue to be a brand with value. But now they just have different owners, that kind of thing. But excitingly, Finn Cantieri has finished the work on the Crystal Symphony. And she is going into service today over there in Athens, Greece, home of the first... Olympics, I think. I don't know. Any Olympic historians out there? What's your favorite Olympic event? I like Winter Olympics better than Summer Olympics, but if I was going to pick a summer, I like diving. I think the diving is always cool to watch uh, Summer Olympics wise. Congratulations, Crystal Symphony, for going back into service. Cruise news story number two. Sad cruise news story. I haven't really talked much about it. I've seen a lot of coverage of it, but I do want to mention it in case anybody doesn't check out the other people that do cruise news. There was a young man who went overboard on the world's largest cruise ship, the Wonder of the Seas, near the coast of Cuba. I believe this happened a couple days ago. Wonder of the Seas instituted a search. They searched the area for a few hours and then they moved on. The Coast Guard picked up the search. I believe it's the Coast Guard in Cuba. The Cuban Coast Guard picked up the search. The US Coast Guard not involved. At this time, that passenger has not been recovered. Another sad story of a passenger going off of a cruise ship that was on the wonder of the seas. Cruise news story number three, Norwegian Cruise Line announcing that the Pride of America will be resuming its port stops in Maui. As you remember, wildfires devastated the cruise area and other portions of Maui. There was significant loss of life, significant property damage. The cruise industry pitched in to help revitalize that area in the interim period. Norwegian Cruise Line donating $50,000 and collecting $150,000 worth of supplies for Maui. And now at the behest of the government there in Hawaii, the government in Maui, the tourism board there, they are being invited to return to Maui for cruise tourism. The Pride of America has been doing inter-island Hawaiian cruises for 18 years. Pride of America a special cruise ship. Majority of that cruise ship was built in the United States. It is flagged with a U.S. flag. It has an American crew. This makes this a different kind of cruise ship than most of the other big cruise ships that we have cruising in North America. And of course, its focus is on the Hawaiian Islands. Good that they will be returning to Maui. A good indicator that there is some recovery in Maui. I'm assuming they still have a long way to go, but at least the cruise industry, they're able to make an impact with their donations and then also to bring people back to that area to help revitalize Way to go, Norwegian Cruise Line, and we continue to uh, have positive thoughts for those dealing with the turmoil there in Maui. Now, I got to give you some closure on our cruise, the, where we were stuck at sea for an extra day, what yesterday was like, what this morning was like, and then I want to talk about the next cruise for the Carnival Paradise, how everybody on that cruise ship is getting the opportunity to break the law. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruise, 
please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. You may not have known it. I think most people don't know it because I'm just making it up. But today, September the 1st, is National Subscribe to a Cruise YouTube channel that starts with the letter L day. And so, uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of options out there. I'm sure there's some other options. Is there a Love to Cruise channel? I don't know. But a channel that starts with a lot, Lido Loca, you can fulfill the National Day of Cruise channel subscription by hitting the subscribe button. It's just right under the window here. Subscribe, notification bell. That way, well, we already said you're not going to miss out on any episodes. Do it. It's, it's kind of like, uh, like a warm shower. It makes you feel good. Uh, thank you in advance. All right. Yesterday, we were on the Carnival Paradise. The day before, we were on the Carnival Paradise, and the port of Tampa closed. It had been closed since Tuesday because of Hurricane Idalia. The day before yesterday, they told us, hey, we think that we're going to go into the port of Tampa late and that we would disembark around 3 p.m. So have all your stuff ready by 1 p.m. We're going to disembark by 3 p.m. We woke up yesterday morning and it became clear that we were not going to be disembarking at 3 p.m. We were kind of outside of the harbor with a bunch of other ships, other cruise ships, tankers, those kind of things. And there was a disembarkation meeting scheduled for 10 o'clock that would give us the details on what it was going to take to get off at 3 p.m. Around 9.45 or something, they came on and gave an announcement saying that that disembarkation talk was not going to happen. Hang tight for further information. And so that was, you know, a beginning of the indicator that we would probably be on the cruise ship for the whole day. And like I mentioned in yesterday's show, to Carnival's credit, they did a good job of making yesterday a regular sea day. They had programming in place across the cruise ship, stuff for people to do. They extended the drink package for everybody who had the drink package. They also provided free internet for anybody who wanted wanted internet. And so that was true. And then about 12 o'clock, there was another announcement that there would be an immediate disembarkation meeting to tell us what was happening. I went to that. I listened to the captain and the cruise director and a couple other officials there talk about the plan was to enter the harbor at 3 p.m. And when they say entering the harbor at 3 o'clock, I don't think a lot of people understood this in the room. And I don't think a lot of people understand the Port of Tampa. When you enter the harbor, it's still a a bit of distance, like 12 miles, to get from what's considered the harbor entrance to the port, to the dock. And so it takes uh, anywhere between three and a half and four hours. So they told us that they wanted to take the pilot on at three o'clock, and then it would take the four hours and that we would disembark around 7.30 p.m. But that was all conditional on the Coast Guard completing their assessment of the port post-hurricane and that they would give us a further update as time went on. There were some interesting questions in that meeting. I'm gonna do a video for tomorrow talking about exactly what Carnival provided for people that were on the cruise ship and the things that Carnival did not provide. There were some upset people in that meeting, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but you know, as time went on, three o'clock went on, we were still outside the harbor. You could tell that we weren't making our way into the harbor. 4.40, we were still outside the harbor with those other ships and an announcement came on and said, look, we're not getting in tonight. Uh, this will just be another full sea day. The casino is gonna be open. The drink package is extended, free internet for everybody. You know, All the services will be there. There will be nighttime programming. There will be comedians. There will be a rock concert by the cast, all that stuff. And so by about 4.45, we settled into this idea that we were not going to get off the cruise ship yesterday. Now, the challenging part of it is they did take people's luggage between 1 and 3 o'clock. So some people gave up their luggage thinking that they would get off the cruise ship at 7.30 last night, only to find out that they were going to have to stay another night. We did self-disembark with our luggage. We had our luggage. It wasn't a big deal. And so we found out at that time that they were going to try to have us alongside the port at 7 a.m. So sometime four hours before that, the pilot would come on board. We would enter the harbor like 3 a.m. We would be to the dock at 7 a.m. And when we woke up at 6, I woke up about 6.15, we were in the port of Tampa. We were ready to disembark. And Jenny and I got off the cruise ship a little bit after 7. We used the valet parking service there. I cannot recommend this thing enough. It cost $20 a day. We spent $100. And as soon as we walked out of the exit of the terminal, we handed our ticket to the valet. And within five minutes, our car was there. 
they loaded the car for us with our luggage and we got in there and we drove off. Of course, they moved the car for us during the storm to higher levels of the parking garage. So we made sure that we gave the parking attendant a big old fat tip and a big thank you for keeping our car safe during the storm. Shout out to those guys at the valet in Port of Tampa. Uh, really a wonderful thing. But the interesting thing is they staged the valet cars for disembarkation and almost immediately your car appears and you can get in it and leave. We were back in Spring Hill by 8.05, something like that. So we woke up at 6.15 and we were back in our hometown like at eight o'clock this morning. So uh, a wonderful experience. Our cruise ended, we disembarked. And now today there will be passengers that embark on the Carnival Paradise. And they were scheduled for a four day cruise that included a stop in Cozumel. They were notified yesterday that their cruise will no longer have a stop in Cozumel. Now what's wild, and here's the breaking the law portion of it, they had to get an exemption to do that cruise because there is a law on the books in the United States that was enacted back in the late 1800s called the Passenger Vessels Services Act. And it's a protectionary law to protect commerce in the United States. And it says that any foreign flagged vessel, if they're doing a cruise or a, any kind of marine traffic from the United States, if they leave a port in the United States, part of their itinerary has to have a foreign port stop in it before it can return to the United States. So every cruise in North America on cruise ships that aren't flagged in the US, and remember we said earlier, there's only one, the Pride of America. So every other cruise ship that does business in the United States, all of their itineraries have to have a foreign port stop in them. Well, because the Paradise had to drop Cozumel, there is no foreign port stop. They're just gonna go out to sea and come back. So they had to get an exemption from the government to break the law. So yeah, so these cruisers are kind of like, you know, they're kind of like rebels out there now. They're breaking the law. They're doing a cruise to nowhere and, and they are getting paid handsomely for it. To Carnival's credit, even though the weather is outside of their control, they allowed passengers that were booked on this cruise a couple options. Passengers who did not want to go on the cruise because it was being shortened or because they were challenged because of what was going on with the hurricane, they were allowed to cancel for a 100% refund to their original form of payment. And they will also be receiving a 100% future cruise credit. So they didn't even go on a cruise. They got all of their money back and they're able to take the value of the money they spent for that cruise and book another Carnival cruise. That's pretty cool. Now, people who decided to stay on this cruise to do the shortened three day cruise, of course, their cruise fare is gonna be prorated by one day. They're gonna get a refund of the one day that they missed out on. Of course, they're going to get refunded any port and tax fees that went along with that Cozumel stop. Of course, they're going to be refunded any money that they spent for cruise line excursions. Their drink package price will be prorated. Their internet price will be prorated and and they will also be receiving a $200 onboard credit, and they will also be receiving a 50% future cruise credit that they can use toward another cruise. So uh, pretty sexy, pretty sexy. Now, for us coming off of that cruise that got extended by one day, there are some questions that I don't know the answer to. Uh, the question hit me yesterday, somebody asked me in the comments, will we get credit for that day sailed? Will it go toward our loyalty sailing? Even though we didn't pay for it, it was an extended day. Will that go toward our VIFP loyalty points? I don't know. I'll have to look in on that. I feel like there were a couple other questions. I'll try to compile the questions and I'll put that in that video tomorrow about the people that were upset about what Carnival did not do. Uh, but I'll put that in tomorrow's video. But yeah, so it worked out really well for us. We got an extra day at sea. It would have been nice to know early in the day yesterday that we were going to have the full day because you spent part of the day like, are we going to get off? Do we need to be packed? Do we not need to get packed? But again, it was a very fluid situation. If the harbor would have opened up at 3 p.m., we would have went in at 3 p.m. There was an interesting discussion about how late we would have went in. But uh, yeah, it was nice. We had an extra day at sea for free. And I said it the day before, there's no better place to be stuck at than at sea on a cruise ship. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty great. And I should mention when Port of Tampa opened up this morning, it was the last Florida cruise port to reopen. So business is open again in Port Canaveral, in Jacksonville, and in Tampa. Miami was unimpacted. Fort Lauderdale was unimpacted. So all five Florida cruise ports are rocking and rolling. 
And uh, yeah, it was interesting, uh, interesting into a cruise for us. Boom, that is your cruise news. How the heck are you guys doing out there? Happy Friday, everybody. Are you ready for a Labor Day weekend? What are your plans? What do you think about any of these stories? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I sure hope you enjoyed it. You can show your support by hitting the like button. And don't forget, today is national. Subscribe to a YouTube channel, a cruise YouTube channel that starts with the letter L. So make sure you do your part. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise News. Cruise News. Cruise.